I'm Snake of Bacon, and today it's Super Mario Sunshine that I'm reviewing. And I'll finish off this packet of roasted crickets right now. Got all those legs there. Yeah. Let me show you. Whatever. Now, because they taste well, boring, I get to spice it up with this bread out. But anyway, that legs up. Yeah. All right. Super Mario Sunshine into the game. Here it goes. So this is Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube. Here's just the introduction. Mmm, good chocolate. Ooh, look at that! The voice acting is simply terrible. Absolutely awful. Welcome to the sun drenched tropical paradise of Isle Del Pino. Oh. We're so pleased to welcome you to our beautiful home. Come enjoy a natural wonderland. I can't take any more of this. This is Super Mario Sunshine. A very good GameCube game with horrible, horrible cutscenes. I've got to get it off my chest. Let's just show you some. I've severely shortened them too. over to that shore and find some assistance. I am Flood, a flash liquidizer ultra dousing device. I hope to be of assistance. Yeah, I rest my case. Now, enough of bagging out the cutscenes and voice acting, the rest of the game I like. You have to catch this little blue uh, guy. He's an imposter, and he has graffitied Isle Delfino, and because he looks similar to you, you've been blamed, and you must clean it up with your cool multifunctional water backpack. So this game got quite a lot of unfair press when it came out. People were just very angry that it wasn't like Super Mario 64, and that it didn't come out at the GameCube's launch. Seriously, no Nintendo console has ever come out without a Mario game at launch, and then GameCube comes and goes, Look, here we go, we've got Luigi's Mansion. And sure, Luigi's Mansion was very, very great, uh, apparently, I haven't tried it yet, but it wasn't Mario. And as far as the media was concerned, this wasn't Mario either. And I'll admit, it is very strange and different. But not really. I mean, the basic platforming elements are still there. It's still the same kind of game as Super Mario 64. Only this time around, you're on an island, and there are weird little... I don't even know how to describe them. All these residents hate you, or at least half of them. And the vast majority of the game is spent on this island. So that kind of limits the diversity of levels. But I do not mean for one second that this is a bland or repetitive game. I mean, sure, you do spend a lot of time just spraying mud. Okay, that part is quite repetitive, but this, what you see here now, you couldn't possibly call this boring. No, this is some crazy stuff going on right here. Eventually I figured out you meant to fill his mouth with water, Right, so he's full as a goog, and then explode him three times. Which is, of course, far less gruesome than it sounds. And he turns into mud. That's that's pretty weird. Poor PD Piranha, we'll miss you. Oh yeah, and you're meant to be collecting these shine sprites too, because without them, most of Isle Delfino is left in darkness. And in the dark, one cannot grow pineapples. So one cannot be happy. 
you know I'll do the fin. It's a very fun, lively, happy game, apart from the sort of dark, sad city. Most of this game is just really happy, joyful, fun. And yes, you can rip the limbs off the giant squid. Um, yeah. This was a strange boss battle, but a fun one nonetheless. The controls are relatively simple, but they feel as if they were really properly made for this GameCube controller. They really utilize the strange slider triggers on the GameCube. The music is good, naturally. It's a Mario game. They always have good music. And the graphics are shiny and nice to look at. Major praise to Nintendo for these really fantastic fluid effects. I mean, obviously like, I couldn't identify it back then, but this is probably the first time I'd seen good volumetric liquids. There are obviously much better examples now, like fairy tale fights, but that's an altogether different game. In conclusion, look, this is to the GameCube what Fable is to the Xbox. Actually, that's a pretty bad analogy. Fable's much better, in my opinion. Still, though, Super Mario Sunshine is a fun, happy, exciting, and enjoyable game. You can find it fairly cheaply, anywhere between $4 and $25 is usual pricing. It's not the hardest game in the world, but it's not exactly, like, completely easy. And the camera is kind of terrible, but I've used worse. I mean, come on now, Super Mario 64's camera wasn't exactly great either. Then again, it didn't move. This one moves all the time. In all the wrong directions. But as far as platform adventures go, it's a good one. I just wish I could spray sulfuric acid out of my flood and just melt everyone though. But I'm kind of sick.